I want to give you a more concrete case study on how to develop autonomous systems with model based design and deep learning. So now we are going to take a concrete example of an autonomous system which will be a safe driving car or in this case a safe driving autonomous platform. And what I want to, you to take uh, from this workflow discussion is that model based design helps you manage the complexity of such autonomous system that can perceive, plan, and act. That computer vision and machine learning drive the innovation of autonomous systems. This is when I'm talking with uh, customers about autonomous systems, they always ask us about machine learning and deep learning. And you will see very powerful modeling and simulation environment that accelerates design iteration. So let's start our case study by considering a safe driving car, so a car as an autonomous system. And to be able to drive itself, the car needs sensors, LiDAR, cameras, radars. We will hear about it uh, in later calls, talks today. And of course, the car needs actuators and controls to be able to drive around. So controls for the braking system, for the steering, for the gas pedal. And because it's autonomous, we need intelligence that link the sense to the controls with some intelligence. So it will be perception algorithms and planning algorithms. And that's what we are going to see today in this talk. And so let's solve a real problem, a concrete problem, to discuss this workflow. And so it's a car driving in an environment that needs to recognize maybe some signs in the road. So if it sees a stop sign, it should track the stop and park in front of the stop. Or maybe it sees a speed reducer, then it should reduce its velocity. Or maybe there are uh, some objects in the scene and the car needs to avoid the object. So because at MassWorks we don't have car prototype to play with, uh, we have a small mobile platform, a Husky robot. So this is the robot we will consider today to discuss this workflow. So it's a Husky robot, it's ROS enabled. We will talk about it a little bit later. It's got a Kinect, so a 3D uh, camera and a LiDAR. And here, here is our, how the application looks like. So you can see on the left that we have a application model in model based design, taking care of the video processing and the control logic. In the middle of uh, Fenster, you see the simulation model in Gazebo. So the MATLAB Simulink is related to a robotic simulator where you can see the scene and see the, uh, the self-driving car. Here, for example, tracking the stop, going to the stop, and then it will turn left in front of the stop. And well, we tested also this application in the field at a trade show. So on the, on the right, you can see the um, autonomous application of the Husky robots driving around in a, its environment. Good. So how did we get there? Which technologies did we require in order to develop this system? We need our system to be able to perceive its environment. So for this, we added computer vision, machine learning, maybe deep learning, maybe sensor fusion to the system. We need it to be able to plan a trajectory and to decide what it should do in different situations. So that's the planning part with technologies such as navigation, such as state machine to um, design the decisions. And then this plan 
needs to be put into actions. So we need to design actuators and to design the control for the actuators. And maybe the most tricky part of developing this application is then make sure that everything fits together. So to integrate the system through system simulation, then implement it on a maybe embedded device. So for, for this cogeneration could be, could be useful and then test the system um, in real time. Okay, so let's start with our workflow. And first, I want to show you the system level design. So we, we take um, a pen and a paper and we draw a system level design where we draw the different aspects of the system that are required to make everything work together. So we need a navigation algorithm, we need an object detector, we need a state controller, and we need to uh, plug these functions with our robot or simulator. Okay, so now let's start in our agenda. And first, let's take care of the perception algorithm. So like we see, um, like, we, like we just see, we need to um, develop algorithms so that the robot can recognize signs on the road. Um, so first, I want to show you where it can go because uh, this technology, so deep learning, uh, is really the technology uh, our customers ask most when it comes to automotive driving and uh, object recognition. So deep learning is a very powerful technology. It's a demonstration of, of how you can use a pre-trained network in MATLAB to very quickly uh, design or test a deep learning network to recognize objects based on a camera feed. But in our case, um, <clears throat> I want to show a more classical machine learning workflow because actually that's what uh, we used to design and to solve this problem in the case of our safe driving module recognizing signs on the streets. So for this, um, you, you need to start with a bank of training data, so images of the different signs, and then go through a process. So first, a manual feature extraction when you extract information out of the data in order to then train a network. Yeah, and at this point, um, I wanted to show you a very small MATLAB demo to show you how you can do this in, in, in MATLAB and how I uh, did this uh, example on my side. So I hope I can show you this. Uh -huh, let me. Uh, screen resolution. Yeah, now, now we have it. And so let's look in our training data that we have. So the first step is, as I said, to um, collect a bank of images in order to train our data with. Uh -huh. I hope we still have it. Okay, very good. So we need a bank of images. We need pictures for the membrane here. We need pictures from the stop, for the, for the stop at this point. And we collect some, a bank of images uh, with which we can then later train our algorithm. So the next step is to extract some features from this data because we are doing classical machine learning where the feature extraction is manual. So let's do this. 
and um, I have a MATLAB function that enable to take a picture. You see that the resolution is lower than the initial picture, and then extract some region of interest, some specific features in the image. So here we use, um, it's called the history of gradient algorithm to extract some specific angles in our image that will then lead to a classification. And at this point, a little bit of manual uh, guess it needs to be done. Of course, you can automate this, but at this point, we can, for example, uh, guess that a feature, a uh, cell size of four by four will be a very uh, good compromise between precision and data reduction to train later algorithm. So now we have a feature extraction framework. We can perform this feature extraction on all of images to get our data that we will then put in our machine learning algorithm. So this is how our data works. So we have 700 rows of data for each image, a row describing the features inside the image. And we have 1,765 rows. So the first uh, 1,764 rows are for the features that were manually extracted. And the last row describes the class of the object. So we have at the end a class that can be one for the membrane, and then two, three, four, depending on our different objects that we want to recognize in the scene. Now we have the data. And um, using MATLAB, a controls engineer like me can then feel like a data scientist using the apps that makes the classification extremely easy. So we just open up the classification learner app from MATLAB, start a session, get the data in the app from the workspace. It's a training data, OK? The data is loaded in the app. I just need to define manually what are the inputs of this algorithm and what are the outputs. Let me just take my mouse here. and define the last row as a response. I define a validation method to make sure we can assess the precision of our classification algorithm based on validation data. And then I can start doing data science on my data and training a new algorithm here, a complex tree algorithm that I can just click on play, down train, and the machine learning algorithm will be trained, and I get directly the result. I can plot a confusion matrix so I know exactly how many of my samples were correctly um, uh, classified and which not. And I can iterate and maybe uh, train a support vector machine, which is a very popular um, machine learning algorithm. And after some time, I will here see that the support vector machine performs very well and I will take this algorithm, I will extract then the train, the, the train model, uh, the classifier to my algorithm, which will enable me to go to the next step and perform um, uh, the next um, the step in this application. So very quickly, I showed you how you train a machine learning algorithm in order to classify objects in the scene. And we solve the, the problem of uh, detecting signs on the road. So what we did is traditional machine learning, where we manually extract feature um, in, in, the, um, in the images before we go through a classification. An alternative and a trend uh, in the machine learning communities, deep learning, where a deep network learns itself the features um, from directly from the image test and sound. So it's a very promising approach that enables higher, um, 
higher precision, uh, but requires more data. Okay, so we saw the perception from the object detection point of view. For some application, you don't you, uh, you also need to um, combine the information from these vision algorithms with further sensor information because you want to know where the objects, how far are the objects in the, in the scene. So for example, if you, um, if you implement a forward collision warning algorithm, you really want to know how far the object, for example, a pedestrian, is in the scene. And for doing so, you need to combine the information for the vision algorithms with other sensors, such as a LiDAR. And to combine this information, you need specific um, algorithms, such as sensor fusion, which enable you to track objects, um, track multiple objects. So that's what you saw in the, in the, in the video. It's, uh, demonstration from our new product, the Automated Driving System Toolbox that contains sensor fusion frameworks, and you see that the algorithms based on vision rad radar and LiDAR data uh, manages to identify the closest vehicle. Okay, so now our robot can perceive in its environment, see objects, see how far the objects are, now it needs to take decision. What should it do? Where should it navigate? And for this, we offer um, a bunch of possibilities in um, planning and navigating. So these are a couple of mobile robotic algorithms that you can use for your applications. So that the robot should, based on its, on its perception, knows, know where it is in the scene. So that's localization, algorithms that enable the robot to locate himself um, in the scene. Then the robot should be able to build a map out of its environment and to navigate in the map. So for mapping, we have occupancy grid and um, path planning with probabilistic roadmaps for navigating in a given map. And given this um, uh, this navigation, maybe there will be new objects entering the scene and the, the robot should be able, or the car should be able to avoid this object. So if a pedestrian is uh, appearing on, on the right, the car should be automatically stopping or even driving left. And for this, you can use um, a vector field histogram algorithms. So these are uh, mobile robotic algorithms that's located in the robotic system toolbox. <coughs> and then the robot should be able to take decision between the different, um, the different information coming from the sensors, coming from the navigation algorithms. The robot should be able to prioritize um, the information and take decision. And for doing, for doing so, you can design state machines to design and debug your decision algorithms. Okay, so now we have a plan. We need to implement this plan. This plan needs to be put into action. And for this, we need to use actuators. So for an autonomous vehicle, the actuators, it's the steering, it's the brake, it's the gas pedal. Um, and it's very important that the plan is put with very high precision into action. So for example, if you have a forward collision warning algorithm that tells you or tells the robot that it should stop in 20 meters, then the braking system should really make sure that the car stops in 20 meters. And for supporting actuator design and actuator control design, uh, we have a very powerful solution, so model-based control design uh, that enables you to model the, the um, uh, physical system, so for example, the vehicle dynamics and the controls in the same environment, and that accelerate control design by providing a common platform for software design and hardware testing. So this is, um, some, this is a subject, a topic I, I will cover 
this afternoon in the session on safer um, control, or safer system design with Budapest Design. But in this session, I just want to show you a video of an application uh, that was um, <coughs> implemented in order to test emergency braking algorithms with model based design. So it's a real-time simulation where the vehicle dynamics and the control design are each one implemented on a real-time testing environment. So these are speed, speed good machines that run the controls here in real time. If you want more information on how these machines work, please visit our colleague of the Speedcode company that have an expo a stand here. Okay, so now we have perception, plan, and act algorithms. We want to integrate everything and make sure that everything works together. So let's go back to our system level design where the different components were described on paper. And the strength of model based design is to go from here to an integrated system level design. It's just a matter of copying one to one the system design that you have on paper into model based design, into Simulink. And you can integrate each one of these uh, modules, so the, the object detector, the obstacle avoidance, or the state machine as a module into Simulink. So for example, the object detector, our feature extraction algorithms, our support vector machine was imported one-to-one -one inside of a MATLAB function inside of Simulink. And this design can be executed, can be simulated. So now we, we click on the run button in Simulink and we can test our integrated design in simulation. So at this point, we coupled the Simulink model using ROS with a robotic simulator that enables us to perform closed loop simulation and to see and to verify that our design is, that our integrated design is running fine. So ROS is a trend that we noticed in robotics development. Um, it's a middleware for robotics application development that's, um, that's a trend and that's uh, yearly increasing its users in the academic but also in the commercial branch. And for example, I'm, I'm working with BMW or Bosch into projects involving model-based design and ROS. And it integrates simulation environments such as Gazebo, which are very helpful for closed-loop simulation using maybe Simulink. And at this point, um, so MathWorks and MATLAB Simulink support an interaction with um, ROS through the robotic system toolbox that enable, that provides MATLAB functions and Simulink blocks in order to communicate with ROS. And using this toolbox, you can connect from MATLAB Simulink to robots that use ROS, to simulators, that provides a ROS connectivity, or you can even generate standalone ROS modules or ROS nodes out of MATLAB Simulink models. Yeah, and this is the last point in this talk is how to implement, how to deploy these algorithms into embedded systems, or for example, um, system using ROS. And the answer for this is automatic code generation, which enables out of MATLAB Simulink design, standalone C, C++ code, HDL, or structured text um, to generate. So for this application, we generated C++ code in form of, of a roast node from uh, our model. And to give you an idea, we obtained uh, 11,000 uh, lines of C code from this model. So you could imagine how many hours, days, months you would need to uh, get these 11,000 lines, lines of code ready and how many mistakes or errors you would um, add by doing this manual translation. Okay, so we saw a workflow from 
system level design, machine learning, computer vision, control design to the implementation through automatic cogeneration. What I want you to take away is that this workflow enables you to manage the complexity of autonomous systems that computer vision and machine learning um, will help um, innovate in your systems and that we um, provide powerful modeling and simulation environment to accelerate design iterations. So if you, have, um, if you are working with such systems, please come to us and uh, ask us for, for more information. Thank you.